When people talk about the king of weapons in The Last of Us, it's not the revolver or the rifle, but of course, the brick. There's nothing more satisfying in this game than chucking a brick at someone's face or using it to smash in a clicker's skull. Of course, bricks can be limited in certain parts of the game, so for this challenge, I'm recruiting a few other items to beat the entire game using only throwables. Specifically, I can only use bricks, bottles, molotovs, nail bombs, and smoke bombs. These are all the throwable weapons in the game, and nothing else is allowed. No guns, no fists, and no head. The only time I'll be using melee combat is to beat the occasional enemy to death while holding a brick, but that is the only time I will not be throwing something to kill enemies. Cutscenes and quick time events don't count, and of course, there are a few sequences where we do have to use something other than a throwable, but I'll address those as we get to them. For this challenge, I did a new game on moderate difficulty. Now, I know, I know, that's so lame, what happened to Grounded? Listen, I could have done this on Grounded, but at that point it would turn into a glorified pacifist run, and I think that's boring. So, I did try to play more aggressively and kill every enemy at certain points, where it's otherwise unnecessary. One specific rule I added is that I have to kill every single bloater in the game. There are 7 of them, and I can skip 5, but I'm killing all of them today. I also will not be using listen mode, which will make it much harder to see when enemies are close enough to get a multi-kill with a molotov or a nail bomb. And with the rules set in place, let's start throwing stuff. Well, you already know what happens in the prologue. Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. No! So let's skip right ahead to the first bit of combat in the quarantine zone. My master broke. Sorry buddy, this is a throwables only playthrough and I don't have a brick to bash your skull in. I snuck past the rest of the runners and Tess and I made our way to Robert's men. Of course, Tess just straight up shoots this guy and I had to let her finish off all of them because I didn't have any bricks or bottles at this point. The next area is the same story and these guys kept trying to beat me up so I had to take it like a champ while Tess slowly killed them. The next section finally had some bottles but these are probably the worst throwable even though they're similar to bricks and let me explain why. Bricks can be used to beat someone to death, but to do this with a bottle, you need to use at least two of them to get the kill. Hey, can I get a Coke? Uh, yeah, is Pepsi okay? So, this section was basically all tests. There really isn't much I can say while on the QZ because bricks and bottles are still the only option, so I did mostly just run by and keep moving. Of course, after meeting Ellie, I had to avoid some soldiers and make my way through tilted towers to get to the capital. I also confirmed what I already knew, which is that throwing bottles at someone doesn't do any damage, it only stuns them. See, he died because he had a revolver instead of a brick. Then I got the first encounter with no tests, no Ellie, and no lethal throwable items. Nothing but my brick and a prayer. There are four runners and a clicker here, and I didn't have a molotov or a nail bomb yet. Fine, so I'll bash their heads in with a brick, except there were only three bricks plus one in my hand, so that still wouldn't be enough for the amount of infected. Hope seemed lost early in my playthrough, but then I remembered the secret weapon. Cannibalism. Nope, not you, David. Cannibalism. That's right, the clickers are so blind, they will happily eat any runner I feed to them. This is still tricky though, because I needed to use bricks and bottles to stun a runner so I could grab it and feed it to the clicker. Runners could also still hit me while I was grabbing one of them, and Joel would then let go of the current runner and have to try again. Or, the clicker would be smart enough to go around the runner and still bite Joel for some reason. This took quite a few tries, but eventually I fed the whole pack of runners to this clicker, and then used a brick to finish this hungry boy off. Finally, the lower subway area is where I first got a Molotov, but with the amount of infected in this section, it didn't make much sense to use this yet. So, I still snuck by here, and then on the way to the museum, I let Tess take on the infected while I pushed this cart. We got inside the museum, and I snuck by until Tess got bitten. Then, I decided to take action. I was able to use two Molotovs here to help kill these infected so we could escape and make it to the capital. It's about sending a message. Just kidding, the enemies were way too spread out here, so I actually just ran through this part to Bill's town, where I did start to play a bit more aggressively. I had to blow up some of his traps with bricks, and unfortunately, I couldn't save this first clicker with the wire trap. 
Phil's trap encounter is a challenge killer, and it's really no exception here. If I was Joel, I would simply not make a revolver out of thin air, and I would make bricks instead. But hey. I even started a new game plus and got all the way to this encounter with infinite nail bombs just to see if I could throw those into the area where the infected spawn, but I couldn't get a good enough angle to kill more than a couple of them, and I don't think it's possible to kill all of the infected that spawn in with nail bombs alone. Running away from the trap, I used a molotov to kill all the runners that chased us to the laundromat. Then once inside, I used another molotov to finish off the infected in there. At this next part, Bill refused to kill this final clicker, so I had to take it out with the Molotov. Right after this, I finally got the nail bomb, and Bill basically just swept a bunch of nails into a can. This thing blows, it shreds anybody standing there by. I am 100% dying to this. Normally I sneak by the graveyard clickers, but I used a Molotov to kill all of them, and the timing of this kill was surprisingly satisfying. I also used one more Molotov in the next area to kill all of these infected. Nobody's bitten, right? Nope. I'm good. I was foaming at the mouth to use a nail bomb or molotov on the runners by these buses, but I needed to let Bill do his thing because I had a bloater coming up and would need all the supplies I could get. I was worried I wasted too many supplies killing the graveyard clickers, but I scavenged some stuff on the stairs in the school and snuck by all the hallway infected. In the gym, there were a few more supplies, so I was able to make another molotov. I had two nail bombs and two molotovs, which ended up being exactly enough to kill the bloater. I had no other throwables aside from a brick left, and when I boosted Bill and Ellie up, three more runners dropped down. Bill shot one, but then didn't want to kill the final two for some reason until I hit one of them with a the brick. The last runner I did have to kill myself with my brick. The truck sequence with Bill was painful because he hates two things, bathing and killing the last infected. Go take a shower, Bill. He would constantly run away and shove infected without killing them. There were some supplies scattered around that I could make more weapons with, but I didn't want to waste a molotov or nail bomb on a single clicker when Bill had his infinite ammo shotgun, and thank god eventually Bill killed the last clicker. Still, I had to use a few picked up bricks and bottles to kill infected, and then I headed to Pittsburgh. Finally, I had to fight some survivors. These guys are much harder than infected for this challenge because they don't mindlessly group up, and you have to work to make sure they're close enough for molotovs or nail bombs. The first guy I kill is a quick time event, so it doesn't count, and the second guy actually can't be hurt with a brick or bottle even though you can throw one at him, and it also is part of a cutscene, so I don't count this one either. I had to rely on bricks here, but I did use a couple well-timed molotovs. I got a good checkpoint so that I could kill this one guy with a brick, and then the second group that dropped down, I could kill all three with one molotov. I snuck through the bookstore because I was low on supplies, and in anticipation of the hotel bloater, I snuck through most of the hotel. The basement is always a scary level. So I crept through here and tried to avoid stalkers until I could fight the bloater. For this one I had to use two molotovs and three nail bombs, unlike the previous bloater where I killed it with two molotovs and two nail bombs. Luckily the bloater dropped an extra nail bomb for me once I killed it, so that was pretty nice. I knew I needed to save weapons for the restaurant and the financial district above, so I quickly swiped my card and got out of the basement. And back in the restaurant, bottles and bricks were back on the menu. No trigger discipline, no baseball bats, did not sort recycling, this guy literally has a helmet, what's his excuse? Ellie saved me and I was pissed because she should have used a nail bomb. Ellie, come on, I would have survived it. In the financial district, I used a well-timed nail bomb immediately to get this group of four. Tourists kill them. Kill all of them. <laughs> also, I made a really fun discovery here that I could burn enemies alive if I grabbed them and dragged them into fire. I even got the Molotov guys to light up spots where I could drag their friends. This was pretty fun trying to group enemies together, but I had a lot of misfires. Still, eventually I got them, and just like my last playthrough, I had the rifle forced into my inventory. I 100% did not pick it up this time, so I guess it's just an automatic pickup. Moving on to the street with the bookstore, I used a nail bomb, a molotov, a brick, and the last guy standing, I was proud to say that I managed to use his own molotov fire to kill him by dragging him to the fire inches away from a tripwire. After telling Ellie about the best movie I saw pre-COVID, I saw this, not before the outbreak. I booked it past the armored gun truck. 
Nice to meet you, Henry. Sorry this is a throwable only playthrough, so I gotta throw these hands. Sam dropped a toy. Good toss, Sam. And I molotov the five guys outside, which was very satisfying. Next, we made our great escape from the city, and of course, I had to take initiative. Okay, let's try to take him out quietly. My strategy was to target enemies on this catwalk before they could jump down because they would all be grouped together. I used two molotovs to quickly get a bunch of them and then a nail bomb to get the rest that were up there. There was one more guy who was on the ground and for some reason Henry did not want to kill him. So eventually I did have to beat him to death with a brick. Not only was Henry pretty useless in that encounter, but he also ditched me and Ellie the first chance he got. So next Ellie and I made our way to the Uncharted 3 bar. Anyone want a molotov cocktail? <laughs> Just kidding, I only have nail bombs. In the sewer, Henry kinda redeemed himself by killing a few infected here, and I used a nail bomb to kill this clicker and one runner. You keep him safe! Yeah, yeah, sure. As long as he's immune to fire and nails, he should be fine. Sam and I were able to run past all these infected here and meet back up with Ellie and Henry. I finally decided to use a smoke bomb here for no reason other than the fact I was holding three the entire game, so I used one, and I used a Molotov to kill a few infected. After that, we took a quick break to play some darts, and Joel. You're telling me you've been throwing items this whole game and you can't even hit the dartboard? Maybe stick to murder throws only. The sniper section sucks. I ran by all the guys near the houses, and then I tried to kill the sniper with a molotov and a nail bomb thrown in this room, but it didn't do anything, and I still had to stab him in this quick time event. And of course, the sniper section is unavoidable. I even tried going back with infinite crafting to see if I could do this with nail bombs, but they just despawned, so as far as I know, there isn't a glitchless way to avoid shooting here. Luckily, the infected in the final part don't need to be shot, other than this one on Henry and Sam, and they can all be ignored until Joel runs away. And then it's on to Tommy's Dam. We get a cute little family reunion. Don't even think about reaching for your weapon. Tell the girl to drop hers now. You lay your hands on me again, it won't end well for you which is quickly interrupted by murderous bandits. This section has a ton of bricks, so I made good use of those, and I also threw a few molotovs. The difficult thing about this section is that the bandits rarely grouped up, and a general rule of thumb for my playthrough is that I would try to kill two in one anytime I could. This made me hold back a bit while trying to get them close enough together, so I restarted a lot of checkpoints here due to missing throws, but the ones I hit were pretty satisfying. I also rushed the guy's spawn on the bridge to get all of them as they ran through the store, and after a few tries that worked out pretty well. Once inside, I was able to get off a good nail bomb. Tommy's guys also helped a bit at certain parts, but man did they take their time. The ambush in the woods was a little annoying because everyone was super spread out. I ended up luring guys over to me in this upper lookout spot where I could get them to group up and use a couple molotovs to take them out. I messed up a beautiful 3-in-1 throw here, but luckily Tommy helped me out so we could get past this part. We made our way back to Ellie, and Joel was pissed. Running off like that, putting yourself at risk? It's pretty goddamn stupid. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? In the house, I killed 3-in-1 with a nail bomb, and Tommy killed one guy. But like every other NPC in this game, he refused to kill the last guy standing, so I had to finish him with a single Molotov. Next up, we headed to the university, and this was kind of a tough one. The first group of runners by this gate I was able to kill with one molotov by getting them to follow me and grouping them up. The bloater in the dorm basement had four clicker friends, who I usually avoid, but this time it took two molotovs and three nail bombs to kill them all. So of course I did end up using most of my supplies here. The hospital at the end took quite a few tries and was a bit frustrating. I got to the end of it using just one molotov, and after Joel gets impaled, he pulled out his revolver to shoot a guy who would otherwise kill him. I tried tossing a nail bomb on the ground floor so I wouldn't have to use the revolver, but the bomb didn't blow up both times I tried this. I concluded it wasn't possible in the remake and had to once again shoot with the revolver here. I only had to fire the one shot at this first guy, but still, it annoyed me that Ellie was so selfish she couldn't get a simple double kill here. Oh, so now you can do it? Not going to talk about the hunting section in winter because we know this is unavoidable, but after my last video I did change the bow reticle to the classic one, so shout out everyone who told me that. The first room with David had no bricks or bottles, but two nail bombs were dropped, so that was pretty clutch. 
I got to the elevator shaft and it had a molotov and two nail bombs. I was able to kill some infected with the overwhelming supplies I had, and then I had to take out the loader. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. This bloater took most of my remaining supplies to kill, but luckily I was well stocked. Hey! Come on, man! That's too easy! I injected Joel with some T-Virus I had left over from my Resident Evil video, and I decided I wanted to make winter harder. So I decided to kill all of David's men from the time Ellie falls off the horse to the time David captures her. So I ventured out to lead the hunters away from Joel, but Callus broke the most important rule for horses in The Last of Us existing. This next part was tricky because I wanted to be efficient and get two kills for every nail bomb or molotov, but the hunters spread out so much I had to be patient and use bricks and bottles to get them to move together. The first part had eight enemies, and luckily I had enough supplies to make some molotovs and nail bombs for them. I had to restart the same checkpoint for these two guys so many times, but eventually I got them with a well-placed nail bomb. I killed them all, celebrated, you are treading on some mighty thin ice here and moved on. Following this, I had two molotovs and a nail bomb left, and I wanted to save one molotov for the guys inside the lodge. There were five enemies in this part, and the trick was to rush their spawn. If I did this, I could kill three of them with a nail bomb and then kill the remaining two with one molotov. The one guy in the back moved around a lot, and sometimes he didn't come out at all, so this took quite a few tries, but eventually, I got three in one and a two in one. Inside the lodge, I got so many supplies, I was actually able to use a molotov for each of the enemies inside here, and another for the enemies at the window. Finally, I left a nail bomb for David by the door, but unfortunately, it didn't go off. I was back to Joel again, and since this challenge taught me to take advantage of any group spawns I could, I had to use a couple of molotovs. As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons... Don't make lemonade! Make life take the lemons back! Do you know who I am?! I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down with the lemons! There's not much to say for the rest of Ellie's winter segment since she loses her backpack and can't use any molotovs or nail bombs. I did pick up a bottle here, but that's about it. There aren't any throwable items you can use in the restaurant with the fight against David, but I did bring a bottle in for good luck, and I found out his weakness, being stabbed. <laughs> And now back to Joel for the weather report. I had three bloaters coming up in the next chapter, and I realized I was already low on supplies, so I kinda just ran through the storm here and made it to Ellie without using any more molotovs or nail bombs. How did you put it? Tiny pieces. We made our way to Salt Lake City, and that's the end of the game. Thanks for watching. Nothing happens after this part. I scavenged everything I could on my way to the tunnel because I knew killing three bloaters would require a lot of firepower. I was well stocked for the first bloater, so I was able to kill it without too much difficulty. The issue here was that infected would also charge at me as soon as they heard me throw a molotov or a nail bomb, so I had to make sure I was killing all of them alongside the bloater. It's okay, this one died of natural causes. I was definitely concerned that I wouldn't have enough for the last two bloaters, but I was able to scrounge up some more supplies to make two molotovs and three nail bombs. Still, if I got them to group up, it would be just enough to kill both bloaters, and on top of that, I needed another nail bomb for the surprise clicker that jumps at Ellie after this sequence. I boosted Ellie before taking on the last two bloaters so I could make a quick getaway after killing them. On the first attempt, I was able to kill both bloaters and a ton of infected, but I had nothing left, so I needed to reload the checkpoint. This time, I got super lucky, and not one, but two infected dropped nail bombs. That's a surprise tool that can help us later! So, I killed the bloaters, and I still had two nail bombs to spare. I knew I would need one immediately, so I used a nail bomb on the clicker that jumped out at Ellie. Look out! You okay? Yeah. Just surprise me. Oh, just casually surviving, being within one foot of some exploding shrapnel. We made it to the hospital, and Joel wanted to go see Ellie's surgery for himself. I had to sneak past much of the first floor because all I had was a single nail bomb and a molotov, and I knew I would need the nail bomb for Jerry. After some scavenging, things turned around on the second floor, and I actually ended up wiping out all the soldiers here. I got them close enough together that I was able to get double kills with every one of my explosives that I threw. 
I made my way to the surgery room and Joel got a good look at Jerry. Man, that vaccine's coming along great. Unfortunately, as soon as I stepped into the operating room, I wasn't able to use a nail bomb or a molotov. I could only access my guns. At first, I accepted my fate and I actually stabbed Jerry here, but I went back to a checkpoint outside of the operating room and I found out that if I threw a nail bomb before opening this first door, I could then pick that nail bomb up and use it to kill Jerry. This is our future. Think of all the lives we'll save. <laughs> and Ellie is still immune to shrapnel. I carried Ellie to safety, but first I had to confront Marlene. You can still do the right thing here. We return to Jackson, and that concludes my playthrough of The Last of Us Part 1 using only throwables. Well, mostly. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Of course, there were a few scenes I had hoped to avoid guns and found out that I couldn't, but for the most part, this challenge was pretty fun. The only parts I couldn't use throwables for were basically where the game didn't let me use them, and I was even able to get around this limitation in the operating room at the end. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe to Epic Cakes Gaming and check out my other challenge videos for games like The Last of Us and Resident Evil. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.